What's up guys, Motorcycle Boss again. This is gonna be the second video in the multimeter series. First one is, why do you need a multimeter? And I will post the link in the description so you can go check that video out and then we can follow along with the series. At the moment, still building it, so just look out for the future videos. This one's gonna be talking about wires, as far as the difference between insulators, conductors, stripping, stuff like, not like party stripping, you know, it's not that, just, you know, removing insulation. But we're going to be talking about all that, the differences, different ways to do it, and pretty simple. Let's get to it. Okay, so first thing we're going to talk about is color. So you can see that there's a green and there's a red. Color, when it comes to wires, means nothing. The only thing that it is used for is to differentiate uh, different circuits that are wired up in a similar thing. For instance, in a car, there's a million wires, and one wire might go to the wiper, one wire might go to the headlight, one might go to the, the turn signal, and they use different colors to signify which wire goes to where, or which one's positive and which one's negative. So that way, if because if you just had a bundle of red wires and black wires and, or something like that, you wouldn't know which wire went to what. So colors just separates things that's really all it is so secondly you have two types of wire you have solid core which is this one right here and i don't know if you can see but this wire is just one single wire and then you have stranded which is this one and if you can see this has multiple pieces in it and they're just twisted all together throughout the length of the wire now Whenever you're doing your own wiring, using stranded is better to use because it's a lot more flexible and it has more surface area, so you're allowed to put more amps through it as opposed to this. A, a solid core is a lot more sturdy. It's normally for uh, used in like housing and stuff like that, things that don't really move a lot, but it's very strong. You can flex it so much, it's going to eventually break as opposed to this. You can flex it a lot more before it breaks as opposed to this. So we're going to talk about the uh, something very, very simple is an insulator and a conductor. There, You need to understand the difference of the two so that you can do wiring in the future and you understand how circuits work. So for instance, this wire right here, we have a red coating on the outside. It's like a rubber plastic coating. And then we have metal or copper on the inside. Now, the reason why it's set up this way is because the red coating is an insulator and the center is a conductor. What that means is an insulator keeps the electricity inside from touching anything outside. So let's say this was positive and this was negative. If for whatever reason these two ends were to touch, it could start a fire or it could short circuit, stuff like that. And we'll get into short circuits later. But you want to keep the electricity in this wire on its path to where it's supposed to go, not uh, somewhere before that point. Otherwise, you could uh, have problems. So the insulation is throughout the wire to make sure that if this wire were to touch the insulation, it's not going to be able to contact the conductor, which a conductor is what uh, allows electricity to flow through. And an insulator makes it so that electricity cannot flow through it. So these two are separate. The insulator keeps the electricity from this wire being able to contact anything else. So if this was a live wire and this was a live wire and they touched each other like this, nothing would happen because the insulation is able to keep the two wires separate. And that's the same for this wire. The green is the insulation and then you have the conducting copper in the inside. So now that you understand the difference between insulators and conductors, you basically have a general understanding of wires in, as a whole. It's pretty much that simple. So let's say you run into an instance where you have to do your own wiring or something like that, and you have a length of wire, and you want to wire, get the, ins get the conductor, into something else, as opposed to a T connection, or you want to just make your own wiring, you want to 
crimp something on the end, something like that. You have to do what's known as stripping. And stripping, all it does is remove the insulation off of the conductor so that you can solder or you can twist or you can test something, something like that. But basically, we're just going to try and expose the conductor. And that's the process of stripping. There's many different ways from using a knife to cut this and then use your, your uh, fingernail to pull it off or anything like that. And there's also tools made specifically for it. For example, this one right here, this is a Klein, Klein Tools load reaction stripper. And it has these holes right here so that you can get different size wires, different gauge wires. And these are like guillotines. They come down and they cut the insulation, but they don't cut the core, the wire inside. And then you have this little hammer right here that holds the wire and then you keep pulling and it pulls it apart. So for example, if I were to set this like this, I'm going to find a hole that it fits in. Let's say, uh, let's say this one. So the guillotine is going to come down and then when I pull, it just pulls that little bit of insulation right off. And now you have an exposed wire. And it also has a, a cutting feature too, right here, so I can just cut the end off. The other thing you can use is something like this, which has a bunch of holes. Sorry about, let me make sure it gets in focus. So you have a whole bunch of holes that are for different gauge of wires. And they do the exact same thing, except it's not an automatic, where once you come down, like here, I actually have to pull this apart. And then there's my insulation. And here's the wire in the inside. This works exactly the same way as with a stranded wire. It's all, it's all exact, exactly the same. The only difference is going to be the gauge. Sometimes a wire is thicker, sometimes a wire is thinner. And if you have more current, which we'll get into later, basically more electricity going through a wire, you have to have a thicker gauge. This wire has to be thicker. But if you don't have a whole lot of power going through it, like in most circuits, you can get away with something like this. I think this is like 22 gauge or 20 gauge, something like that. It's not very thick, but there's not a lot of electricity that's going to be running through something of this size. And we'll get into all of that later on. Uh, let me go get a drink. Today's drink of the day is Coke. A little bit of Jack. So different insulators like this little plastic rubbery thing. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that could be insulators. For instance, this plastic rubbery thing, there could be um, like wool or cotton if you really wanted to. Basically anything that doesn't allow electricity to flow through it. Wood would be a good one. Paint's a good one. Um, air, actually. If you have two wires that are like this and they want to contact each other, but there's a gap between them. Air is a good insulator because it will not allow that to happen unless the voltage is extremely high. So air is a good insulator. These, the reason why these grips are rubber is because rubber is a very good insulator of electricity. So if I were cutting into a live wire and with this whole body being, uh, being metal, metal is a good conductor. So it would allow it to travel down and through my hand and shock me. But that's why we have rubber grips. Same thing here, rubber, because this is metal. So metal is a good conductor. There's a aluminum, copper. Copper is a very good conductor. The best one that I believe is gold. Gold is the best conductor of electricity. And all it is, all a conductor is, is um, something that allows electricity to flow through with low resistance, as in it's not going to impede the flow of electricity very much. And on almost all metals, I believe, do that, especially gold, copper, stuff like that, uh, aluminum, steel, they all, they all do that. But that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. I want to apologize that, you know, it's not a very exciting video, but like I said, this is, uh, this is just talking about wires. There's really not a whole lot exciting about wires, unfortunately. But just pay attention with uh, the new videos coming up, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot more stuff that's going to intrigue 
you. But this is just for people that just know like very, very, very little about electricity. I want to start from the ground up, help build people up to where I would like them to be or where you would like to be. But um, I apologize if this was boring. The next videos will definitely be a little bit more exciting. So that's all there is to it. Pretty simple. This is not too complicated. And now we can move on to uh, a slightly more complicated things. So actually talking about electricity and how it flows and stuff like that. So now that you have the base understanding of how wires are and how they work, things will make a lot more sense in the coming videos. Thank you for watching. Please uh, comment, like, subscribe. I look forward to your comments, your questions, and suggestions. Just let me know if you have any questions. Let me know. I'm looking forward to replying to you guys. But thanks for watching. Have a good day.